Yeah, we are live. What's good, folks? Welcome, welcome. Come on in. Make yourself at home. How goes it? Good to see everybody. Good to see you. Good to see you. Hope you're having a good um, Wednesday. I hope you are uh, having a good week. What's going on, Mr. Uh, Psychosis? What's good, brother? Happy Wednesday. Man, I'm excited about today, actually, man. How about you? I am, too. It's going to be cool. I'm actually looking forward to it. It's good. good. Uh, we don't get to do these kind of rooms, and I just think the concept I'm actually excited about. So Yeah, absolutely. I've been, I've been having uh, sync convos all day, including earlier today, me and her mom were in another room. Uh, her mom's my her mom's my spirit animal. I'm just gonna claim that now. <laughs> yeah, I understand you're a human, but I'm you making I'm making you my spirit animal, her mom. Cause your your songs, I will, I hear your songs and I feel like they are the soundtrack to my life. So I'm just gonna go with that. But uh, shout out to everybody in the room tonight, man. I'm I'm glad we're here again. No doubt, her mom. Oh, what's going oh, on, bro? Oh, real quick, I forgot. Congrats to you, bro. I saw you. What was it? You got 6K followers on TikTok now? Yeah, we're up to 6K. We're trying to, uh, yeah, we're creeping. Yeah, I've been trying man. to work my way towards that 10K. We're going to really celebrate when I hit that. But I don't know. Uh, anybody, anybody in the room, make sure you follow uh, Eric. I'm not, I'm not, he's not paying me yet to say that, but he does give great content. <laughs> he does give great content and, um, and education in those quick snippet videos, which is real hard to do, but it's, it's always helpful. So salute to you, man. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Herman, what's going on, bro? What's going on? What's good, Eric? What's good, psychosis? Thank you. Thank you for the spirit animal. I'll take it, man. I'll, I'll, I'm a furry bastard. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be okay with that. <laughs> My man. My man. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, man, cool, man. Happy to be here. Uh, I, I, I caught the email, uh, the control camp email, so uh, excited for uh, for this session, man. It's going to be uh, it's gonna be cool to get back to basics and hear everybody uh um, everybody's take on it, you know? Yeah, it's going to be good. We're going to pull, pull people people up to the stage, some of the people who've been in control camp um, for a while. And then we're going to a number of, we're getting more and more new people in the room. Um, people who, you, you know, like I said, found, found us on TikTok or on Instagram or somebody told them about it. And so I just heard about it on Clubhouse. And so we don't always get to, sometimes we're, we're just continuing our sync conversation and don't always get to, double back and just kind of make sure we cover some of the groundwork, some of the foundational stuff. And so I thought it'd be cool to do that today. And the, the problem with sometimes is um, it could be boring for the people who've been here a while, you know, when you start going back into like, what exactly is sync licensing or what are music libraries and some of the basic questions I worry about um, people, you know, getting bored, like, okay, I know this and not covering something. So what I thought would be cool was to actually, you know, involve the people, you know, who've been tapped in for a while and um, uh, let them be part of the question, you know, the Q&A and getting some uh, answers answers in. And so um, we're going to flip. I'm going to be doing more, que you know, asking some of the questions, some of my, um, what I get DM the most, uh, what people, you know, the uh, TikTok comments, that I see the most, um, I'm going to kind of um, use that, you know, those comments, DMs to be questions and then uh, kind of let people in the room uh, on the stage kind of take some of the answers and then uh, we'll kind of go from there. A um, couple of things to start. So as we're coming in, I appreciate people coming in. We always ask people to help us with the pinging. So that, that, icon at the bottom right that looks like a, a person with a plus sign. That's the ping that lets you, anybody that you're following or connected to, you can let them send them a, rem a reminder that this room is going on and we really appreciate that. And I'm sure they would appreciate it because this is some good info. Uh, so that's a cool way to do it. And then um, TikTok actually sent another cool way to help notify people about the rooms, which is on that bottom left side, letting, um, you, it looks like a circle with two arrows, two arrows in a circle. Um, if you hit that, it'll let people on Clubhouse kind of know, hey, I'm in this room, and it's you know, it's 
it's uh, it'll kind of repost it to them. So any anyone who shares that way would be really helpful. And the other ways to kind of share on outside of Clubhouse, you know, Instagram, post it to your stories, whatever you uh, do to kind of help spread the word, I definitely uh, appreciate. All right, uh, let's see the homies trays in here. Um, all right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let's let's start getting uh, some people up here while we are getting the room set up. Got Trey Ace on the stage. What's going on, Trey? What's up, Eric? How's everything? Doing good. Good to see you. Good to see you. Same. How's your Wednesday going? It's going good, man. Productive, busy, but productive as always. How about yours? Uh, it's been cool. It's been uh, I, today. Um, so we're like, I'm like, um, we're like a couple days away from rolling out this um, membership site. So Control Camp, we're doing a, um, we've got like a website, but we're actually, I've been building the a community site, like a membership site, but it's a free membership site. So you can kind of join. It looks like a private Facebook group, but it's independent it's it's a uh, it's just on controlcamp.com and so people will be able to like we're going to host our briefs there we'll host our listening sessions there people will be able to find collaborators find producers to work with um, um so i've been working most of the today was kind of putting the finishing touches on the site and i got a few more things to check out and then we're going to start beta testing tomorrow so i'm pretty pretty excited about that yo that's, that's a big deal man I remember you telling us, you're speaking of goals like we were talking about last week. I remember you had mentioned this as one of the goals you wanted for the group, so it's dope to see it coming to fruition. Thank you, man. I'm actually really excited about it. Um, anyone who has, who has um, at the end of the year, I, I did post a call for volunteers as we're kind of entering this new phase to um, grow. And so anybody who did um, sign up as a volunteer is going to get invited to be part of the beta, beta test group. As well as anybody in our Patreon, um, that's uh, all the Patreon and the and the beta and the volunteers will be the beta test, and um, we'll get in there for about a week and kind of knock around the site. And there's actually uh, groups organized, and there's actually briefs up there now, um, so they'll be able to kind of get in there and play around, and then it'll open up to the public within a week after we start beta testing. All right, let's. Um, so for those who don't know, uh, uh, Trey, this is your second time here. So since we have some new people, um, give, why don't you do another introduction um, just so people know who you are. Uh, I go by Trey Ace, uh, music supervisor, songwriter. Um, I work on Home Sweet Home for NBC. Um, One Perfect Shot that's coming out on HBO and also currently working on Cherish the Day um, as well. Uh, season two, so um, I'm definitely looking for music for sure. Awesome, awesome, awesome! Yeah, Trey was Trey Ace was in our listening session on Saturday. Get some great, great feedback. Actually, um, requested uh, one of the songs that he heard, which was really, really cool. And so uh, we're we're grateful to have you uh, here taking part. All right, so. Uh, let me get, I think I have a couple of quick announcements before we jump in. One, we are, because that listening session we did on Saturday was like three hours long. It actually went an extra hour. We had so much music uh, to go through. And so um, we're going to start doing them a little more frequently. I'm actually doing one again this Saturday. So if you're on the email, if you're on the mailing list, you got the mail today saying that we're doing one Saturday. So you can, um, if your submission was already on there and we didn't play it on this past Saturday, It'll be there for this week, and you can um, submit if you have not. Um, that's on controlcamp.com, which is ctrlcamp.com. There's a submit link on the page. And then Sunday, we'll, we'll be back again for another. We're going to try to come back again for another um, a film score convo. We did it last week. We had uh, Matthew Head and Gilby Flores, uh, two people working on some really big shows as the main you know, producers of the show. So we got had some really cool convo just talking about that um, converse, just the process. Uh, we got talked about how they build their business relationships, how they pitch for work, how they find their sync agents, how they found their yeah, their agents, different for composers, but the agents that actually get them their work, uh, how they found their agents, 
Um, it was really insightful. So that conversation will hopefully continue Sunday as long as they don't get pulled away for uh, work or, or a studio gig. All right. Um, pull some people up on stage. You got Eric uh, on stage. How you doing, Eric? Hey, hey, I'm, I'm doing really well. How about you? Doing good, doing good. Yeah, you've been on, uh, um, you, I don't have you have you been here from the I don't think much from the beginning, but you've been in Kentucky for a while, right? Yeah, I think since um, I want to say June or July of last year. Yeah, uh, I've, uh, so I'm pulling. I'm just going to pull up some people. If you've been here for, it's hard to see everybody, but if you have been here for a while and you want to um, want to jump up and be part of the Q and A. If you're coming up now, you're coming up to participate on the answer side. So you've been in control camp and you know, you know, you've um, you've heard some of these foundational questions and you want to take part in some of the um, uh, Q&A part. You don't always have to have all the answers perfect. We're here to kind of support one another. But uh, I would love to uh, have some people who've been in the camp uh, for a while and then once we go through some of the basic core questions, we'll also open up the floor to um, just the general audience to cover questions that um, we uh, haven't covered. And you are um, welcome to participate in that as well. All right. Um, I'm only pausing because it's a little tricky trying to um, talk and back channel people at the same time. Um, so pardon my my uh, pauses. All right. Let me pull up my, my document. Uh, we got Q on stage. How you doing, Q? I'm good, man. I, I'm in the grocery store, so you may hear some loud, you know, noises, or I don't know how what my reception is, but I'm doing good. Uh, How's everybody else? Doing good, doing good. Good to see you. I totally understand. Uh, so no <laughs> worries at all. Uh, what Josh up? on stage, just seeing you in a little bit. Josh, good to see you. T. Wilder, how you doing? Sure. Doing good, man. How are you? Thanks for um, pulling me up. I haven't been on here just because, you know, I did Clubhouse during the pandemic and I was home. And then once, like, New Year's hit last year, kind of went back to work. And it's just been a crazy ride. So, But I'm home again. So I was like, let me get back on here. And it's great to see everybody. Cool. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the – we that so many people that – um affected even like Stefan Durage as part of the issues why you know they uh, got pulled into other stuff is uh, when the pandemic you know things people went back to work and the time started getting real real precious for everyone so I definitely re relate to that I've heard that over and over and over from a number of people but good to see you really good to see you thanks man all right uh, and Tim is on stage uh, Tim has been on stage a number of times, and I, now Tim, I don't think you go back a year, but you have been on for a while. I think I go back on Clubhouse for a year, but Control Camp maybe six, eight months, something like that. Still a great, still a good, good time, right? And um, Colleen, Colleen, you've been on for a while. You've been in our um, after parties, and you've been here for a while. I got to say, at least I'm guessing six months. Well, I've been on Clubhouse since uh, late May of, of last year. So, and I think I've been on Clubhouse probably at least five or six months. I mentioned on a control camp. Control camp, yeah. Very nice, very nice. All right, so uh, uh, as we're talking, I'm going to, uh, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to, I get a lot of um, frequently asked questions. So I'm just going to jump into some of those and I'm going to do it like I'm asking the questions and toss it to some of you. Um, if you want to jump in and give a, a different take or add to it, you can always do the slow the slow flash. Uh, the people that I've moderated are people who kind of, um, you know, are in this space professionally. And so we'll kind of jump in as we need to, to um, add to questions or maybe redirect some of the answers if we need to, but I really want to give a chance to some of the experienced control camp members to um, handle some of as you know as much as the Q and A uh, as as possible. All right. So the first uh, the seems basic. You know we're back to basics. But the first the most popular question I get is simply what is sync licensing? We talk we toss that term around a lot, 
and we talk around it kind of like we know the phrase, but out, I notice that outside of our circles, a lot of people have not heard that has not heard that phrase used that way or to describe what we do. So somebody walks up to you and is like, you do sync. What exactly is sync? Uh, um, start with Tim, how would you, how do you respond to somebody who just asked that? What, what exactly is sync licensing? Yeah, it's, um, so when you get into the, the technical terms, as far as you, uh, uh, publishing and copyright sync is matching the audio to the visual. Um, so audio that's placed in television is background music, um, music that gets into a movie that then can get into the soundtrack, not necessarily the soundtrack that's sync, but that's sort of tied up into it. But, uh, sync is, is really about synchronizing the audio and the video. Awesome. Awesome. Very, very well said. Anybody want to, uh, add anything to that? Okay, so sync is about synchronizing audio to video. So when you're talking about like TV, so getting your music on TV. So if in addition to placing music on television, what some other type of sync placements can I get? What other types of, you know, sync are there? Let me go to talk that to Q. Yeah, I was just thinking when he's answering that, like uh, even beyond like, uh, like TV and film, I was thinking media period because I've, you know, since I've gotten into sync licenses, I've learned that, you know, whether it's YouTube videos or podcasts or um, even, uh, I believe, radio commercials may fall under that. They, they have a lot of contests in Atlanta um, for these 411 paying radio commercials to, to create songs for that. So, um, you know, yeah, I would, I would think it would just include media period, any, any type of public media. Um, that you're pairing music to or matching music to. Awesome, awesome. All right, and anyone else want to jump in with any uh, specifics? What are some different types of places where um, um, within that media? Um, give me some specifics uh, usages for uh, music in sync. Well, I think, you know, when the world you're jumping in right now is a great example of how TikTok, for example, a lot of people are synchronizing music or audio and they're acting out a clip or a sketch, but they have music as a part of it. And we don't think about that in the terms of sync, um, but the music that's being played or the, the sketches or clips, especially when they turn viral, become big revenue for some of those artists and songwriters and producers. So um, everything from TV and film to video games to, to Snapchat to um, Instagram stories and Facebook stories, anywhere where influencers might be posting music and content. Um, those can all be things, uh, sometimes we put them into two groups, syncs and micro syncs, but I think both of them are, are, are paths because my only addition to what Tim said is, is, you know, when people ask me sync, I say what he said and then I say it's the answer. It's the solution you, you probably were waiting on if you're an artist or a producer or a songwriter and you've been trying to figure out how to get out there and you don't have, you know, connections, you're not on the label and you don't have a budget and you out of money. Um, but you don't, and you, and you, and you know what you're doing. You just can't figure out how to get it out. Sync is the answer to that question to me. I love that. I love that. Sync is the answer. That's a, that's, that's really, really cool. Actually. All right. Dope. All right. Any other takes before we move on? Okay, so uh, if we're talking about types, so what, some of the things that and we did talk about this, but I'm gonna go through a little list just in, in case um, um, anyone works in any of these areas. So you know, so we, we're covering we're talking about music for TV, film, advertisements, video games, movie trailers, podcasts like Psychosis was talking about, but also social media like TikTok, et cetera. Um, there's custom work for production companies. There's actually a number of different types of lanes. There's film scores, uh, scoring films and television shows, which is what we talk about on Sunday. So there's all these variety of lanes and um, every single lane has its own rules. It's not like, you know, there's one thing um, that you need to do to get a sync. And so sometimes you, you hear someone talk to say, how do I get in sync? 
and really getting in sync is kind of understanding the variety of different lanes and saying, oh, how do I get my music on television? Or how do I how do I work with ads? Or how do I work with video games? Because getting on TV and getting on ads and getting on video games require three different strategies. It might require different music. It might require um, dealing with different um, different people. So sync is broad, but each of, each of those lanes um, exist uh, in there. All right. So speaking of the music, I right, know the most frequent asked question is. I make, you know, whatever kind of music I make, what kind of music tends to work well um, in sync? Um, Eric, did I go to you already? Let's go to Eric. Ooh, okay. Um, I mean, I would say that that, what type of music works well in sync, like that really, um, that can really depend because there's going to be, you know, different genres for, for different, whatever a music supervisor may need. Um, but, I will say that hip hop and pop I are are extremely common if that's what the uh if that's what the question is getting to. Love that it's very and they totally are. and that is what it's getting to very nice. All right, anybody else have any additional things they'd like to add to that? I see uh Colleen flashing. Yeah, I've heard it said that all music is syncable, but it's a matter of um is it uh you know, how likely is it to get sync? One in a million or one in a thousand or one in a hundred? You know, it, it depends on the lane that you're targeting and it depends on what what the uh client needs. So, you know, it's a it's a matter of targeting. Totally I love that. Yeah. Um all music can be syncable. Um uh there are some popular genres that are more requested. And also knowing kind of a target, like if you if you have different lanes, if your music is uh, cool, vibey, and um, um, real optimistic and real feel good, it might work better um, for ads than say for video games. If your music is real aggressive and kind of like adrenaline fueled, and you know that might be a great video game or maybe a great you know movie trailer uh, vibe. And if your mu music is real, has deep emotions and you deal a lot with heartbreak or um, uh, being real in your feelings and maybe there are some cool TV dramas that you would be um, perfect for. So some would say that kind of all music potentially is thinkable, but knowing what's, what's out there and kind of what works um, can help you identify kind of uh, how to target and where to target. So Colleen, I do like that you um, pulled up the targeting. That's a really, really, really good way to look at it. Uh, any other thoughts before I move on? Hey, Eric, it's Kate. Hey, Kate. I, want, I wanted to add that Sync is also somewhat regional, especially for advertising. If you talk to agencies in LA and New York, they'll tell you, oh, nobody ever wants country music. But if you live in the Midwest or the South, lots of ads use country music and movies use country music. So it's really, interesting that it's not you know you can talk to a lot of agencies but if they're all based in the same place they're all looking for the same thing and other parts of the country have completely different demands on what they're looking for so that's another issue to look at i like that kate i like that this, this the distinction um i think it's definitely regional i also think that like the la and new york agencies a lot of them tend to focus on national and international projects and so like but then in you know in atlanta here or in greenville south carolina there's like eight just the local agencies regional agencies here um they might be dealing with uh smaller clientele and they may not be doing national campaigns and so their their needs um would definitely be more more niche more more niche than um the national ad agencies i i like that a lot i like that just i like distinguishing that great point yeah, even even a national brand like you know a chevy truck is going to have a different kind of music on it in tennessee than it is in la that's just you know the way people respond to things so the same product maybe even the same ad agency but they'll market it differently nice very 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 cool all right um so with that if I make music and I'm making music, what, how do I actually know 
if my music is syncable or how to pitch my music. Um, Lisa's on stage. Hey, Lisa. Hey. Uh, how would I know if my music is syncable? I mean, you want to make sure. I would definitely let some peers here or folks that have had some placements and just really get some honest feedback from those people and be open to change if, if, if need be to make it that, make it that way, you know, that that's been my experience, you know, and just really listening and uh, learning from the people who've been in those spaces and have had some success for it from it. That's where, that's where I begin with to see where, to see if it's actually syncable. Great, great answer. Anybody want to add to that? How do I know if my music is, is syncable? I think there's a room on Saturday that might be able to help a little bit with that. Am I right? Exactly. So uh, we're talking about listening sessions. We do listening sessions. So which is it ties into what Lisa said, kind of having peers um, listen. But if you can do something formal like a listening session uh, that you can be part of, then that's a great other way to get ears on what you are doing. Good point, Tim. And uh, just to follow up on that, um, you know, Eric, you do a great job of uh, shouting this out. Um, but on controlcamp.com, there's also some playlists in a couple different uh, areas that, you know, if you're doing research just to try to find a vibe or if you're watching a show that has some music that you're, you're digging or that's, uh, that's the type of style that you have, um, just do your research there and, and be honest with yourself, you know, study the structure, study the emotion of the song. I think that a lot of music supervisors are are really trying to just get that right emotion. Um, so, you know, everything from dynamics to, uh, you know, just the, the vibe of the, the song from, you know, lyrics, etc. All that stuff matters. But research is a big key. Couldn't grab my mic. Totally agree. Totally agree. Really, really good. Great point. Um, Colleen, were you jumping in? Yeah, I wanted to add, you know, in terms of research, like the first thing would be whenever you're watching a show or a movie, pay attention to the music and how it's being used. Um, pay attention to what the music sounds like, whether it's, you know, um, great big um, percussion, you know, things like that. Uh, also, there's an excellent resource called TuneFind.com where you can go and uh, look up songs that have been used in various TV shows and, and movies, etc., and actually listen to clips of the music. So you can do some research that way as well. That is great. Oh, you guys are giving some great points and some great insights. Um, I see a couple of, I got a, one or two people raising hands for questions, but I'm going to hold off on the questions for now. I'm pulling people up to the stage who kind of been in control camp and let them answer some of these frequently answered questions, and then we'll open it up for um, additional questions. So just hang out, hold on a second, and um, I'll open uh, the floor up. Eric, real quick. All right. You mentioned that oh, go ahead, Troy. You, you had something on your website that um, that that was like the – it was like a list of the, the most sought-out um, – yeah, no, right the, sorry, the but, top themes, songwriting themes. Yes. Thank you, yeah. I think that, I think that, that'll be very helpful um, to figure out whether, you know, if your music is in the right direction. Um, I think they're able to, to, to know what um, music supervisors are looking for, then they would know what to write or, you know what I'm saying, to see if their music fits in that lane. So I think that'll be helpful. Thank you, yeah. So what um, on our website, controlcamp.com, uh, we have a sync one on one page and one of the top one of the first um, things we have featured on that page is a PDF uh, of top 24 songwriting themes requested uh, in sync. I actually got that idea from John Kleinbell and Kathy Heller's class. They they used to publish a, um, a list of um, top topics and I always kept that and just, you know, always kind of modified it as new briefs came out of. You know, and I keep it, even have it on my wall or keep it, you know, on, on pinned to my um, desktop. Just as I'm writing, I keep a list of, you know, these are the themes that are always 
often requested and sent. It could be empowerment, um, feeling good, uh, optimism about the day, you know, fighting through struggles. So like 24 of them. So we made our own version uh, and it's available on on our site. Right now, we, the site is still the old site. So that is actually a paid um, download. It's a couple of bucks to download that. When the new membership site comes up, that'll actually be included in the free education. Um, so, but it's up there and it's actually a really, really cool, uh, a cool resource. Um, okay, so really, really good answers here. Um, I was going to say one other thing that, that you just mentioned that, that this is the biggest thing for me is if you're investing your time, energy, and even money into communities like this, um, like I know Control Campus bought on supervisors and I was in uh, Kathy Heller's course too. So we, you, they bought on supervisors or people, the people who are actually looking for the music. And if you stay involved and stay connected, I mean, they'll come on and tell you exactly what type of music they're looking for. So I think that's a good thing to just stay involved in the community. Once you get in and see the networks and the, the, the type of communities you need to be around where that are available in this industry, you'll be able to hear exactly what the people who are looking for the music are looking for. Awesome. Awesome. Such good, such good info. Um, the only thing I would add to this, so we talked about comparing it to music that's out there. We talked about getting feedback participating in listening sessions, having your own peer group. Um, I definitely have people in my circles that I know I can send any song to, you know, who are experienced in the space and they'll be, and they, they tend to give me good feedback. So that always helps. And also you can pitch it, you know, that you don't have to sit on it. Sometimes um, we sit on our stuff sometimes too long. I'm guilty of that also because we, you know, we're not hundred percent sure, but you can put it out there. It's one of the reasons why I did like being in, um, when I was active in taxi, I would often submit things, even if I had relationships with other libraries, I would submit things just to get the feedback, just to get their written response to uh, what it was, because I felt like whoever, you know, sometimes the people who were doing the reviews had good ears and I, I was getting, um, I could, it was, I was getting good direction. So however you get some feedback with just putting it out there or pitching it to um, in a library or an agency or a supervisor or whatever relationship you have, uh, that's definitely something you can uh, consider. All right, a uh, question I get a lot does if I, I make music, but does it matter whether my music is released or um, unreleased? So I see Summer's on stage now. Um, so um, Summer, if you can talk, you, you were in different places, so I'm not sure if you can, but if you can, uh, does it matter if my music is released or unreleased uh, for pitching? Yeah, so I was on the subway before. I mean, it's so noisy because I'm in Brooklyn, but uh, I, I think hopefully you guys can hear me okay. Um, I would answer this question by saying most of the time it does not matter. If you if you release your song, it, you know, and somebody wants to use it for film and television, they don't care if it's been out there. In fact, it could look good that you're, that, you know, they don't, they want real artists. They want genuine music. So if you have fans and, and, and release music and a following, that can only look good. The only time I've ever heard that it matters is, is for ads. And sometimes an ad may want an exclusive. You know, they, don't, they don't want the song released or they want to buy it out or something like that. But, you know, that's sort of a different game. It goes back to what you're talking about with finding your lane. Are you looking for ads, television, scoring, whatever? It, it would probably only be something to keep in mind for that. And anybody can correct me if I'm wrong, but that's kind of like what I picked up so far. I I like that answer a lot. And I like how you distinguish uh, the ads um, because they might – there they might do the exclusives exclusives a really really good point uh anybody want to add anything to that nice you covered it well summer very very nice all right um just added gildy to the stage gildy was with us on sunday we control camp regular what's going on gildy what's up man just uh i'm just listening in listening in and always uh never too informed, man. Can always be learning. So awesome, awesome. Hello, everyone. 
<laughs> yeah, well, what we're doing, so today we're doing, um, it came, for those who came in the room, we're doing Q&A, we're doing covering basics, and to keep it interesting, we're having our control camp regular, the people who've been here, you know, six months, eight months, nine months, and they've heard all these questions over and over and over, and they've participated in different ways, so uh, we're kind of covering the groundwork and letting them answer the questions. And we have mods on stage who are um, experienced in the sync space and will be here to, you know, add to those questions if need be. But you are all doing an awesome job. And, uh, this information is really cool. It's actually really cool that, you know, it means that the information is getting out and we're all hearing the same thing or kind of incorporating uh, some of the same information. So it, it I'm, I'm really glad we're doing this. Okay. Um, so question, I released the project in 2018. Can I still get placements for it or is it, um, too old? Let me throw that to Tim. Yes, you can still get placements for it. I think, um, back to what I was saying earlier, it's more about just the fit and the feel of uh of a song and how how it might fit a scene um and and maybe an example of that too is like you'll be watching a show and you know all of a sudden um a song that that was popular in your childhood is playing and it just it all depends on the right vibe of what the music supervisor looking for i actually wrote a song in 2012 and it was um on the side this season no actually it was, it was on power this season i believe so, yeah. That, that is awesome. Yo, that's amazing. Thank you. Awesome answers, Tim. That's so cool. Yeah, that is great, Trey. Kate, I see you flashing. Oh, well, if you happen to have music recorded in the 70s or 80s, you're golden right now because there's a huge demand for that. Awesome point. 70s, 80s, 90s. And now I'm starting to see Breeze for um, 2000s, um, you know, if you either recorded it or you know how to do those sounds, um, mainstream music from, from those periods, there's always demand. It's actually a cool thing about sync is that, um, you know, if, you, if you're if you a mainstream artist or you're, you know, if you're trying to shop for a label, there's always this fear, especially in mainstream music, which evolves so fast. You can work on a song in January and then by November, you're like, oh man, can I even like release this anymore? Like it sounds dated like already. But, you know, Sync is a place, TV, every show that's made is made in a certain time period, and they often want music that sounds like that time. So having things that, you know, you released five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, um, still, still works. I get, I'm, I hold on to stuff in my in my catalog and keep it ready to, to pitch. Cause I know, you know, uh, especially I'm, I'm eager for this 2000 stuff. Cause I've got a cool batch of stuff that's just been sitting around waiting to, waiting to get pitched. So it's, it's, it's a cool time coming up. Okay. Uh, any other thoughts on that before, before we go on? Oh, I had one quick thought on it. Um, yeah, any, yeah, exactly. Right. Like anything is fair game. I think the only exception is when, um, you have you're specifically trying to release your newest material alongside of a brand or you know uh or a movie it's where it's a coordinated effort with your newest hot single um but other than that i you know yeah exactly right like anything is fair game sick so can you give me can give me an exp ex uh, example of that situation just so i understand it more uh, yeah, so it would be like, for instance, um, if an artist is coming out with their with their new si uh, single, they may coordinate with a music supervisor who's working on a um, on an on a Nike ad, in order to have have those come out, have the commercial and the single come out at the same time. Gotcha. I'm totally following. Yeah, yeah. And then often those. That brand wants they they don't want to know that this was released you know already five years ago or stated they they want the excitement and the the energy of something brand new. I totally get that. Yeah, good good point, Eric. Very good point. Um, okay, um, so I keep hearing about music libraries and sync agents. I hear people tossing around these terms, music libraries and sync agents. What are they um, exactly? Oh, I see John on stage. Uh, I'm gonna toss this to you, John. 
Hey folks, how you doing? Sorry I'm late. I had to put the kids to bed. Um, I, I look at uh, music libraries almost like, um, you know, like, as libraries in a book, or I'm sorry, books in a library. You know, you go into a library, uh, you have a need for something. I want to find a book on X, whatever that happens to be. So I sign it out. Um, if I'm a, a content producer, a music supervisor, uh, 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 and I need, uh, I need songs in a particular style, music libraries are set up where they're compilations by a lot of different artists of a lot of different types of music. And they all have great search engines where you can punch in what you're looking for, whether it's tempo, whether it's feel, whether it's theme. They have, you know, all the, and that's where the metadata is really important. And basically, like going to a library to sign out a book, um, I would go to the, you know, I being the content, the person who needs the content, would sign out, would, you know, uh, the music from the music library. And, you know, I would pay for the rights to do so if that makes any sense. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so music libraries, and then do you want to um, differentiate that from a sync agent? Yeah, now, now a, a sync agent spe specifically, now I don't have the experience as being a sync agent, I'm on the, the other end of that, but um, but the, the idea of, of sync is, you know, you're, you're specifically trying to synchronize, you know, music to, to picture. And that's where, you know, I think more on a uh, by case basis, the sync agent would, um, you know, almost like a, I go to a I go to a custom bookstore and I say, hey, I'm looking for I want somebody to make a book to, you know, to uh, about such and such a topic. I don't know if that's a good analogy or not. But but the idea is, um, it's, it's you know, my experience is the, the sync stuff that I've had at least has been um, more kind of to order, if that makes any sense, rather than just kind of, uh, you know, I, 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 when, when I'm a writer writing for a music library, I have a little different mindset, whereas my job is, is to provide a lot of content, not necessarily knowing where it's going to end up at the moment, but my job is to fill up the library, help fill up the library so that people looking for it can find it. Sync, I think, is maybe a little more specialized, um, just from my experience, where it's less about quantity, um, it's more about finding the right fit for the project. Nice, John. Nice, John. I love the library analogy, um, the book library analogy for uh, sync libraries. Anybody else want to um, distinguish library, take a shot at distinguishing libraries from a uh, sync agent? Can I chime in there a little bit? Uh, Kate, and then I saw Colleen. Okay. Um, I want to add publishers to the conversation as well, because that also gets confused. And it, uh, from... It's, it's a generalization because they all, there's always somebody who calls themselves one thing but acts like something else. But from a, a publisher is somebody who represents your music and theoretically pitches it both to artists and to sync. A sync agency only pitches it for sync and doesn't collect the publishing royalties. The publisher collects the publishing royalties. The library isn't pitching your songs. They're letting your songs sit there and people come to them. But they do usually take the publishing or percentage of the publishing of your song. So people who call, most people who call themselves sync agents or sync agencies take a smaller cut and they don't take your publishing. There are a few who call themselves that and do take publishing, but I think the majority don't take the publishing. Whereas the um, a publisher is by definition going to collect your publishing royalties and they will get 50 to 100 percent of your publishing and libraries also take your publishing but instead of pitching your songs they let the buyers come to them and that again those are generalizations and there are always some that operate a little differently but that's kind of an overview good generalizations i actually like the way you broke that broke that out um colleen were you jumping in yeah, I was going to say that in uh, in in my understanding, a sync agent or a sync agency um, basically maintains a stable of artists um, who, who have you know catalogs of material, and the agent um, gets briefs from um, you know uh, TV or film companies uh, or wherever 
and uh, so they go looking through their um, their stable of artists or their their catalogs and see if they have something they can pitch for that particular um, uh, opportunity. And uh, so they're basically representing your music uh, to the uh, music supervisors, et cetera. Very nice. Good. I, I like the analogies into this, um, the way it's, these are being distinguished. I like, Kate, that you brought in the publishers just to kind of have that as part of the picture. Where I tend to, um, I, I love the book analogy. Um, I, I, I like to use that. And then um, the way I think about sync agents, um, I kind of think about sync agents like sports agents, you know, where, where it's like the library is more focused on the books or the songs, which is a collection of songs. A, just in the same way that uh, a, an agent for athletes, a sports agent will represent athletes, uh, sync agents tend to think more as the at the artist level. They're representing an artist, and the artist comes with a group of songs. But if you look on their websites, they're more focused on pitching, you know, a particular artist and showcasing. You know, we represent this artist. We're finding sync placements for this artist, and because they're kind of in that business model, they do, like Kate said, tend to work more on a commission basis. Whereas, you know, as we get to a placement, we'll get a percentage of that sync placement, and not necessarily touching um, the publishing. Again, these are all generalizations and uh, it, there's no um, regulation in this field. So anybody can create um, a website or start pitching and say, hey, I'm an agent or I'm a librarian. So there's no regulation of who uses what term or, you know, I'm a publisher. And so um, these generally, these are how um, they're distinguished, but you will you will definitely find some exceptions or some people who seem more like agents but operators but call themselves a library or seem more like a publisher but call themselves uh, uh, an agent. You'll see that um, in a lot of places. All right, this is awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, um, so now that I have a good, better understanding of kind of music libraries and sync agents, how do I find them? Um, how do I even know which who which who are good ones to um to work with? Let me go back to Q. Um, how would I even find a music library or sync agent, and how would I evaluate them? Um, I don't know if I'm the best to answer this because uh, from my this is just my experience. I found them through again being involved in uh, communities like this and courses, and then learning about the conferences. Um. The different sync conferences so that's been my experience before before you know the past year and a half or so um that was a big question for me how do you even find these people that put the music in there but i just happened to like i said i joined kathy heller's class which opened me up to a lot of other resources and other courses and other um uh, finding out about conferences and things and then i was able to build relationships that way so that was my experience Awesome, awesome. I'm uh, Colleen, I see you flashing. Yeah, I've uh, started to become aware of some YouTubers who uh, basically compare different uh, music libraries and tell you about them and how to uh, get your music into them. And, you know, all libraries are not created equal. There are some that are better than others. Uh, it's hard to know which libraries uh, music supervisors tend to use. I think it probably varies uh, from company to company, but uh, one uh, library I've heard of recently is called Motion Array. And uh, <clears throat> the person that was talking about it said it's one of the better ones. Uh, although you have to, it's one of the ones where you have to apply to uh, get your music in they don't take just everybody. Very cool. And does anybody want to add anything to that? If I can jump back in, Eric, I, like I said, through, you know, going down the rabbit hole and continue to go, uh, I came across, I think it's a website. Is it, I, I can't remember the exact um, URL, but this music library report. Um, that's a good resource if you would just want to research libraries and get like first-hand opinions, um, they got like reviews on there from people who've actually dealt with libraries and 
or Cinque. Um, I think it's called Music Library Report. If you, if anyone wants to Google it. Awesome, good, good stuff. I, uh, I, uh, Music Library Report. I sometimes I forget whether it's actually with an S, um, or nope, it's just no S. It's just Music Library Report dot com. But yeah, they're like a consumer reports for music libraries where you can kind of it's a paid subscription. And you can do paid subscriptions from, I think, as a short, as like a month at a time to, um, you know, annually or um, actually recently. I, I, they do deals from a time. So the last time they did a special, I think I, I did the lifetime membership because I always end up getting a couple months here, a couple months there. And so it's good to just, you know, hear what other people think about um, different uh libraries or you know it's people's opinions but it's good to get them i did not know about the youtubers so that i'm glad to hear about that colleen i wouldn't if you can find the link colleen and dm it to me i'd love to check some of those um review reviewers on youtube out that'd be really cool thank you um yeah and what, then what q also said about um attending conferences and partaking in pitch opportunities, whether they come through organizations like ours that do listening sessions, uh, What Up Pitches does listening sessions. Um, I think uh, John isn't here and I don't wanna mess up the name of his group. I think it's, um, he does Making Moves with Music, but he has a new um, community that I, that I don't have a name off of handy, but, but they have pitching sessions in their um, community. And so if you can find people that do pitching, you know, pitching sessions because they're bringing the supervisors to these sessions. And that's your opportunity. This is one, this is, I'm um, gonna do a little sidebar, but music is one, music sync or sync placements is one of the places in the music industry where I am less um, concerned about um, pay for play type stuff. And it, there's, there's like a general fear in the music industry in general that if something's charging you, it must be kind of a shark, you know, or something. And if you've been a control camp, you know, we do almost everything free here. Um, so I'm, I'm saying this, it's, I'm, I'm, this is my opinion, you know, as somebody who offers a lot of things for free, this is one industry where the paid stuff is worth it. You know, I do my stuff for free, but I pay for listening sessions all the time. I go to paid conferences like Durango. I do, um, NARP is another organization where you can, um, they, they'll take a music supervisor and put, you know, you in a room with 20 people and you can have like a private pitch session with that person. You know, it's, um, I've had good results at things like that. And I know other people, Tamara Bubble is a real, you know, passionate one about being out and all these things and, you know, pitching it every, every chance that she, she gets. And that's why she gets all the placements that she's able to get. So, um, you know, looking for those types of conferences, pitch opportunities, whether they're free or paid. Um, and this is a cool thing to pay attention to. So good suggestions um, from uh, from everyone. I would like to echo the whole networking thing. And that, you know, it's like once you start getting to know people who are having some success and finding out, you know, what agencies are getting those placements, join every Facebook group, whether you use Facebook for anything else, get on Facebook, join all the sync related Facebook groups and look at all the successes people are having because they're saying, okay, I got in this TV show and the placement was done by this agency. I got in this ad, thank you to this agency. And you look at those agencies. If the music sounds like music you make, you know, track down those agencies and that's where you start submitting because it's a great resource for just figuring out what kind of music is represented by whom when you see all of these placements happening. That's a great, great insight, Kate. Yeah, the networking and the Facebook groups. I'm in a bunch of Facebook groups, and it's exactly, it's exactly that. You get to, you do get a lot of access to what people are using. And I, what I like that you say, Kate, is like you hear, hear the placements, and then also, you know, do you know? I see what they're doing with my music, kind of similar to what's going on there. So a couple of layers on what you just said, and it all, it all makes a lot of sense. Really, really keen insight. All right, so I've just if I say let's say I discover a couple of sync agencies, I've networked, I've gone, I've pitched to some people, or um, you know, I've heard about these different agencies, and if somebody likes it, somebody said this one is um, the best, or um, or whatever. So I found these things. Now, how do I reach out to these libraries or agents? How do I contact them? How do I how do I get in touch with them? 
Um, open the floor. Who wants to who wants to address that? How do I get in touch with you know these libraries or sync agents once I hear about them? Most of them have access on their website that tell you whether they're accepting new music and how to submit it. So you go to their website and follow directions. Love that. Any other thoughts? Yeah, no, you know, one thing we we preach in control comp a lot, you know, depending on if you're going through an agency or through a music supervisor is, you know, if you're able to establish a rapport, establish a relationship, if you're able to have a conversation with somebody from something like a clubhouse or Instagram, if you join their groups, if you, you attend their lives, the seminars, or go to the conferences where they are, if you're able to make a connection with them in, in real time, in person, or you know, even just now I know you as a person versus you just sending me emails and music, you know, that kind of that can fast track you stand on the top of mind. Cause any I don't care what you're doing, you know, any kind of sales or marketing is always about being on top of mind. And the easiest way to be on top of mind is be an actual person that they know. Treat them like a human, talk to them, follow up with them, and they'll keep your music on top of them. Great, great insights. Love this. Love. Uh, any other thoughts on this in reaching out to um, to music libraries or sync agents? Okay, Kali. Yeah, I was going to say um, Clubhouse is an amazing place to network and establish a, a relationship with all kinds of people <clears throat> who can help you in your career. Um, uh, and you never know when someone's going to ask you, uh, you know, do you have any any kind of music that you could send to me? Um, an example is I was in a room. Uh, I think it it must have been a panferware room, uh, and I can't remember exactly how it came about, but I played one of my songs. Uh, I I assume I was invited to do that. And um, and Anthony said, where have you been hiding? You know, and so I said, would you like to hear more? And he said, yes. So I sent him a few um, uh, songs on a disco uh, playlist. And then a few days later, he emails me and says, do you have anything a little more up-tempo that builds? And I said, uh, not at the moment, but I'll work on it. And a couple of days later, I sent him something and um, he offered me a non-exclusive contract. So, um, you know, that's one way uh, to go about it. I love that. I love the networking aspect. Does, was somebody else flashing? Is that Q? Yeah, I was going to say, I wanted to pick it up back off what the Costa said too. Um, you kind of deal with people based on, you know, how you meet them and, and how your relationship that you establish with them. And like you said, going to these conferences is and, and, and seeing people face to face is a really good way. Um I just give an example like just and, and, and just like you said, be human, be cool. Like, um I met a network, you know, executive or director at a at Durango and just by, you know, being you know, of course they've heard our they heard our music there, but just by being cool and offering a beer to her and not even a creepy way, just, you know, being <laughs> something as simple as that turned into a major deal, at least it was major to me, um, that I just, you know, completed um, by building that relationship there um, as, of, you know, this the top of this year. So, um, like you said, just just be cool and be human and, 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 and try to, and, and start, you know what I mean, try to establish a relationship, but, you know, you just have to... Um, you know, like I said, be, be authentic, be cool with people, and you never know what interactions will turn into, you know, what kind of situations. That's awesome. Keyword is be cool. I'm happy you said that multiple times. Be cool. Exactly, man. And Eric, I'll, I'll, I will also um, vouch for that. That's been my way of like, uh, call it success in my own, in my own view, coming from like a bedroom, you know just networking and getting on the laptop with like living in a small town in Texas and all the excuses that I could make for myself of not being able to quote, make it. So I think my thing was just building with people, um, you know, building rapport with people and just 
staying with it. Like everything that I've gotten in my career, I've been fortunate of, you know, just a handful of people that I've built with for like 10 years. So yeah, it's definitely like, I think we were, uh, this past Sunday, we had Matt on with Eric. Uh, it was Matt and he had just said just, uh, oh my gosh. I mean, I, I was thinking about it, then I totally forgot what he said. I'm sorry, I'm multitasking. It was on that same line, though, right? It was the same line of, like, being cool and just chill out. Yeah, there you go, chill out. Not being aggressive, yeah. Yeah, no matter who you're in the room with, you're there for a reason. And if you're not there yet, it's because you're still needing to learn a lot of things that you're going to need so that when the time does come, you're going to be prepared for it and you're not going to mess it up. Because I've been in the room with people that I've seen literally – mess their entire careers up by just the most ridiculous things of like ego. I've seen a lot of people with ego and thank God that I've learned from my parents and my grandma that would bop me on the side of the head if I tried to even step out of place. But it's just battling that ego that makes you, you know, that makes some people want to say they're better than others or stuff like that. It's like seeing everything like a competition. And If you really knew how much work is out there and how much money is out there, However you see it, the placements, there is so much for all of us in this room and beyond. There's so much opportunity out there. So there's no reason to have like this competitive, you know, foaming at the mouth type attitude towards things. And yeah, just treat people like they're humans the way psychosis and uh, Nasira said, just, just build, you know, just be you, be unique. Don't beg for things. Don't push yourself. And in divine time, everything will line up the way it needs to. So, man, kudos to that. Love that. Love that. Uh, this has been great. All right, we're, we're an hour in, and, um, man, this has been really cool. So if you're joining us, what we're doing, uh, we're, this is Control Camp. We're a community uh, geared around sync licensing, uh, sync education, free sync education community where we, uh, talk, we share information on making music for TV, film, ads, games, uh, et cetera. Uh, this is our uh, Back to Basics uh, room where we are kind of covering, you know, the foundational things of what is sync licensing? How do you, you know, what is a music library? What is a sync agent? If you've missed any of those definitions, this replay will be available. So afterwards, you can kind of go back and, and play this back. Just uh, follow the follow the camp, control camp, and you'll see it in our clubhouse profile. Uh, but what we're doing is um, we are using the member, every, people on stage, especially the ones who are not moderated, they are uh, people who've been in control camp since almost the beginning. You know, we, we're, we're over a year now and we've, we've been talking uh, um, about this, these topics often. So I thought it would be cool to let them handle uh, the Q and A. And we still have the, um, uh, you know, producers, composers uh, and supervisors who are um, modded, who can, uh, you know, add insights to questions, but this has been really cool. This really shows that, um, that um, one, this is just a cool community. Uh, you got who are, who are getting educated in lots of ways outside of the camp on their own, taking their own initiative and learning. And it shows that we have a good base of core knowledge that we we all we're all speaking the same language. So I'm I'm really really uh, glad to have this room going this way. So we got some other questions, but I will open the floor. Um, if you have questions uh, in your in the audience, you want to come up and ask. Uh, the panel uh, will will tackle it. We'll all kind of tackle it. If you have any questions that we haven't touched so far on, or if you came in late and you didn't hear it at the beginning, you're welcome to um, raise your hand and um, uh, jump up and um, and actually we're doing we're doing general Q and A. Anything about think or just you know how to how to pitch what to pitch, um, we'll take that. Otherwise we will um, continue on. I see a couple of hands. So, And then if you don't, if you have a question, but you don't want to come, you are welcome to um, back channel as well. So you can come up to stage or you can send it in the, um, in the back channel. All right. I got Jack Brandy on stage. What's going on? Sir? Hey, good evening, Eric. Uh, good evening to all the moderators also, and just about to everybody else in the room also. So I've <clears throat> been listening, and my question to you, uh, someone was actually mentioning about the, uh, the music libraries, and in terms of um, the type, that the song, the material that you're submitting. So uh, I guess you're saying that to 
submit your songs to these libraries, you have to include the metadata that includes theme, tempo, song style, all that kind of stuff, material in there. So basically, I'd have to pretty much go back and redo all of my MP3s um, that I'm creating. Um, is that is that necessary, or is does uh, the song libraries actually uh, curate their libraries uh, based on uh, some of that uh, information that's already in the metadata and other uh, information that they can just uh, actually pick up, like BPM of the song and all that kind of stuff. Uh, let me, uh, who, who, anybody want to tackle that? Um, so when you submit it to libraries, um, do you need your metadata um, already um, in place before you submit? Well, I, I, I know John. that, uh, I'm sorry, in, uh, in a lot of libraries, you know, when you first get a, uh, some kind of an arrangement with them, they will always, at least my experience, they'll send you almost like a, 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 a guidebook, if you will, with their submission procedures and protocols. And they'll say, make sure that all of your, uh, all of your tracks are labeled as such. Uh, some of them, you can even upload them digitally. I have one library where you just upload stuff digitally and they actually have a spreadsheet that pops up and you fill in the metadata right there. Um, it's always a good idea to include as much specific data, you know, even if the song, even if the track isn't placed, that's just part of, I guess, you know, uh, part of like the being a professional uh, thing of it and having your paperwork together. Um, but as far as like specific things, um, I know that most music libraries will communicate that. Like if they like the track, um, you know, they'll tell you what to do. They'll tell you as far as what information they want, but, just make sure that you're reading that carefully and communicating clearly with them. All right, great, thanks. Sure. I see, uh, uh, Kristen, did you wanna to add to that? Yeah, I'll also add, um, you know, if, if possible, make sure you include AIF files because those embed metadata, unlike WAV files. So, um, you know, make sure that you, you know, send your files as AIF when possible. Um, and also I wanted to kind of piggyback on the last question about, you know, how to submit to libraries and such. Um, and I just kind of wanted to put this out there for food for thought as is, you know, kind of think about what is your system? Like what is your process for submitting to libraries? It's a huge jungle out there. There's so many exclusive and non-exclusive and there's, you know, high quality and low quality and, um, music library report can help get you on track with that. But think about what is your system and kind of committing to what your system is going to be and just sticking to it. Like, like every Monday, I'm going to submit to 15 libraries or I mean, that's like a lot, but whatever is comfortable for you. And that way the decision making has kind of been pulled out of the process for you and you've already decided every Monday I'm going to submit to 15 libraries like that's my Monday. And so um, thinking about what is your system going forward is really helpful and staying super organized in terms of what libraries have you submitted to what tracks did you submit and um, so thinking about those kinds of things I think is super key going forward. Love that with both of those answers. Uh, was there one more? Uh, otherwise, we'll move on. All right, great. Let's continue. Oh, Colleen, are you flashing? To jump yeah. In <clears throat> yeah, on the subject of metadata. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I think uh, it, it would be uh, a responsible thing to always uh, keep a spreadsheet for all your songs that where you keep all your metadata uh, so that you can easily access it. And a good practice also is to go to isrc.com and buy your own ISRC codes, um, especially for songs that you're not releasing through a uh, digital distributor. Um, and you can buy UPC codes as well, although I don't know if that's necessary uh but uh, you know you can could the isrc code is uh what ties um you know your metadata to that particular recording so 
Um, and I also um, include my contact information in the metadata as well, um, which is always a good idea. Thank you, Colleen. Great, great answers. Um, cool, uh, Jack Brandy, hope that helps. Oh, it certainly does, certainly does. Uh, I don't have a UPC though, but I always try to embed at least uh, photo and contact information, website information also in the, the IRC, but I like the information that um, that lovely lady also provided also about uh, tracking known what tracks and what libraries you, you submitted to and selecting a day. Never really thought about that, but it's all good stuff though. See, now, when um, you do the, I mean, on, guys. the ISRC code, I believe, and all that is good for when you are like releasing it, but just to submit to libraries um, is not, that's not a requirement, but having, and like John said, even um, when you do your, the metadata, Every any library has it could have its own format, could have its own system. They could have their own. Usually, um, like some of them have you know online screens where you just kind of select online. So, um, and some people want AIF. Some people specifically say give me waves. Some people specifically say give me waves that are sixteen bit. You know, and um, you know ninety six k. Someone else will say give me forty eight. And like every um every library or agent will have their own requirements and so just make sure you have access to your sessions and you can bounce out as required and you can send them some will say send me um you know all this metadata and a text message some will say go to my site and add this some will say embed it in the mp3 um, before you send it it's so there's no there's no standardization um but it's it's a good practice to already have know your tempos have kind of have a sense of like the emotional your sound references and things so that um so that you can give that when asked but you are going to have to switch up depending on who you deal with because you know all their formats will be unique sweet cool hey right, we've got nicole on stage how you doing nicole hey happy new year happy new year Happy New Thank Year. You. Good to see you. You too. So what we're doing today, we, um, we're doing the Back to Basics um, Q&A, and we're kind of letting the um, Control Camp members, more of the senior members, the ones who've been here for a while, kind of handle the Q&A questions, but we've got the mods, kind of, you know, the supervisors and the composers and the experienced people kind of moderated here to jump in uh, if they need us, but we, we're kind of getting to chill today and just, uh, you know, um, um, uh, uh, let the let the camp, you know, educate itself. It's kind of cool. Excellent. All right. Um, so who had, the, let me refresh, make sure I got the questions in the right order. Uh, Rose Gold, got you up next. How you doing? Hey, how are you? It's good doing to be good, here. Doing good, Jen. How you doing? I'm good. I love this um, broad topic. Back to basics. Thank you for doing this uh, this camp tonight. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's awesome. I was I've been having this question floating around in my brain a lot lately, and I would love to hear from everyone on stage that has a, a thought about it. It's back to the songwriting and production process of like writing for sync, and I've been hearing a lot of people I really respect talking about finding the formula in sync and um, I just you know I have my own notions of what that means as far as chord progressions or song structure or lyrics or moods but I would love to hear just a more maybe defined um, definition of like what that might mean to some of the members who've done a lot of sync or the you know licensing people who are looking for a certain formula and stuff. In terms of like songwriting, songwriting themes, like sound, just, you know, like having like a syncable, is there like a syncable sound? Is that, is that kind of like what you're asking? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Nice, nice, good, good question. Uh, who wants to jump in on that? I thought she was asking more about like the dynamics of a song, like if there's, is if it's better to have maybe a couple of choruses or one verse or 
or change it up, you know, where to change it up. I don't know. Is that correct? Rose gold or no? Yeah, that's part of it. I think that's my question is I just hear the term thrown around a lot, finding the formula. And I'm wondering if people are maybe speaking more towards the song structure or are they speaking towards there's a certain kind of syncable songwriting that, you know, is out there or maybe it's a more individualized thing. But I thought, you know, maybe if I threw the question out to you guys, you would have some kind of clarity on it. I think structure would have more to do with um, songs for trailers um, more so than anything else. But as a, as a publisher and library owner, I don't, I never even like, I never put anything in a bottle or, or tried, you know, it's, it's whatever sounds good to me. I don't really care about how, you know, the structure or anything and we do okay without caring about that but there are other people i'm sure they're like i do see it too um with other companies where i have seen it that they they go a little bit more deeper um as to how to change up a song or where to change it up and really it just needs to have enough enough different like sections you know that are dynamic and you know so that the song is not monotone um but um but yeah, if anybody else can add to that. I saw Kristen flashing. I think first and foremost, be an artist and be you and do you and figure out what your sound is. And then if you write lyrics, make sure you know, you're writing lyrics that can appeal to a wide variety of audiences and that can, um, you know, anybody can relate to those lyrics. So like if you're writing about 2 a.m. drinking a green tea matcha, in the middle of Toronto, that might be a little too specific, but if you have a specific, you know, if you are a little bit more generalized in your lyric writing, that would be great. Um, and yeah, just, just do you as an artist. I think that's like my two cents. I mean, I can, I've heard so many tracks before from people who are writing for sync and I can literally say, Oh, that was the reference track. Oh, that was the other reference track. And when you're able to actually like pinpoint what their reference track was, I don't know, I kind of start to question that. So um, just do you, that's that's my advice. Yeah, I, I wanna piggyback on that too, um, because you can get caught up in trying to be something that you're not. And if it, it, I think it, it'll, come, it'll come across in a song. So just, you know, uh, I was, like I agree with uh, Dream Tonic. Just be yourself. Just write how you feel. It'll find its home. Every song, it, it'll find its home. Just you know, there's. I hate the word formula. Just just write to what your heart says, and that's the real stuff there. And like when she said, like that was a reference track. Man, you want to just be as as free and as honest and vulnerable as you can as you can when you're writing. So the two things you hear most of, often from music supervisors is they want to hear your authentic artistry and, as Nicole said, they want to hear diverse sections. So if you can combine those two things in the production, you know, they'll tell you, I want to hear something new every four measures or every eight measures. So write an authentic song, but in your production, have enough flavor and enough diversity that they can use it in a bunch of different ways is how I interpret this message that I've gotten from, you know, a hundred different music supervisors because they'll look at the at the waveform and jump to the different sections just to make sure you have enough different sounding sessions. So as if authentic you is a guitar and vocal and it doesn't, you know, have any build and doesn't go up and down anywhere, somebody else can put production on it and just add a little diversity so that it sounds like there's something going on. Yeah. Right. I, oh, who is this? This is Q. I don't know. Hey, Q, I know. Go for it. Nope. Okay. Go for it. I was going to say, I agree with everything everyone said um, previously, but I, I will say, and, and, and this is, you know, my experience again, I don't know if it's just me, but um, like, I think, um, and, and shout out to John Kleinbell, like I said, uh, all the, the the mentors and people that were involved in Kathy Heller's course. But when when you get in, sometimes when you get in courses, like um, I guess it depends on where you're coming from with your music. If you already have an authentic sound, 
um, and it fits, and you find it and it fits, you know, well, if it's not broke, don't fix it. But I, I think it is something, um, and this is with music or anything you're trying to master or, you know, see, and kind of learning, like, not necessarily a formula, but there are some rules which, you know, everyone else just mentioned um, previously that, that you want to kind of follow to not necessarily make your music um, more syncable, but give it more opportunities, like, you know, be in general, don't be so specific. But I think there is something to kind of, you know, learning the rules or learning the formula, whatever you want to say for sync, and then learning, then breaking the rules, because I felt that was my journey. I had to learn, you know, okay, songs need dynamics for sync. Songs need to be like this to be, uh, have more opportunities. And then in the end, I was able to take what I already knew about music and just do my own thing. And at the end of the day, what you find is I took those uh, quote unquote formulas or things people told me they needed in sync and put my twist on it. And I found out like, you know, the supervisor, the people I was talking to at the end of the day, and, you know, just to quote them, they just wanted cool shit. They wanted cool music. And that's what I ended up doing. So in the end, it may not necessarily sound exactly like I, I, I wrote it for sync, but now having that knowledge of what, you know, some supervisors look for in sync that, that informs me or makes me, you know, mindful going into even when I'm doing my thing, you know, how to, you know, put it in a position where it, it, it the song may have more opportunities and I can still be authentically me. I love the way you describe that. I love um I love being mindful of what somebody else might want and then keeping that in mind even as you're still being authentic to you. And I think um, a lot of times when we're thinking about music supervisors or an industry, you know, we feel like there's one or the other. There's what's authentically me and then there's what the other person wants. But even with our fans or any business, any client, there's this intersection of trying to find this is what someone is looking for, but this is what I'm this is what I do and finding that intersection between what you do and what they're looking for is um is the gem of in my opinion of kind of uh where success can be found uh let me get a quick take from psychosis and herman who are both artists and herman can you know as also as a producer and as someone who does custom work work for higher stuff you know the one side of doing ex exactly what a customer wants. And then you also have your artist side. Um, and so I'm sure as you're working on your artist project, um, there's thoughts of this is what I want to be. This is I'm trying to find me. But also at the same time, you've been hearing about these sync rules. So, you know, there's got to be some perspective as you're juggling that. Psychosis and Herman, I'd love to hear from both of y'all. Yeah, Herman, you want to go first, bro? Uh, sure. Um, well, you know, it's, I've, I've been, I've been a musician, I've been living, uh, of music for, you know, over 20 years and, um, ultimately it's, it's, um, you know, there's, there's one thing about art, you know, about making art, which, you know, the most genuine art really comes from the freedom of, of just doing the transmutation of your emotions into, in this case, sonic stuff, right? Audio waves, uh, production, a song, lyrics, what have you. Um, but then there's this other game that we're, not game, but this other aspect that, you know, I think is the whole point of, of, of everybody being here, you know, is the fact that, that, you know, we would like to, to live in this world and possibly do what we love and possibly be compensated for it, right? Because everything costs money and all of that stuff. So this is where all this sync and licensing and business uh, comes uh, comes into play. I feel like uh, it's been my ex my personal experience because you know, I wasn't in the Beatles and even the Beatles or whatever. You know, I mean, if my personal experience has been that you know, in order to um, in order to get, you have to you know, you have to provide something, you have to give something, you have to put something at the service, you have to bend something a little bit. You know, unless you know, you just really want to do pure art. And just what you want to do, and just throw it out there, and 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 that's great. But if you wanna want your art to be commercial, if you want to commercialize, meaning that you want to give it to somebody, and somebody give you money for it, whether it's a license or a play or a ticket to your show or what have you, it's it's there's a little that happens. You know, the real artistry comes in being able to keep that authenticity of doing what you're doing, 
And and it's like looking without looking. It's like almost like you're not gonna try <laughs> to do a sing song. You're not gonna try to do a very commercial stuff, but that's kind of like what you have to do. And it really is like I I I, I don't try to do it, but kind of keep it in the in the in the back of your mind a little bit, you know. And um, and once you find, as they were talking about a formula, it's not so much a formula. But there are certain things that you find in sync, you know, in, in this space that, you know, when it comes particularly to, let's say, the, the, the most popular genres or the most easily syncable genres, the most in demand, which is the pop, the hip hop, the rock, all that, all that modern stuff, contemporary, right? Um, that's the thing that you keep hearing once time and time again is, is your song has to have parts because that helps the editor put you know, make a transition within a scene, you know, when, when, when the song goes quiet to hard, it, it, it accompanies the visual, you know, make sure the lyrics are not specific if you're throwing lyrics in there, uh, which is, you know, uh, that way it can lend itself to a variety of situations, you know, and make sure that the production is similar or comparable to the commercial stuff out there, you know, it, it, it doesn't have to be, you know, the most pristine uh, recording, but it has to be commercially competitive, meaning that if you put it on a playlist, it's not all of a sudden the snare is not going to come and kick you in the face and all awkwardly or something. Like it's all just kind of like that. And for that, you have to sort of develop that that ear little by little by by doing the research, listening to the song, swimming in the music, and remembering as you go through the journey. Like to me, ever since I started really just kind of like producing and really expanding into this whole making music for people and all that. I, I really bring back something that a guy told me after a show a long, long time ago. Some crazy guy that I ended up talking to. And he's like, he saw the show and he's like, you know, you're really, really good. But let me tell you something. The moment you stop thinking you are who you think you are, you're going to make great music. You know, a lot of the times the limitations that we have with genres or with what is comfortable as an artist really comes from our perception of ourselves. And and if you just sort of sometimes let go and focus on the beauty or in the aesthetic parts of even something that you might not do or might not be familiar, it you know, little by little, I feel you start losing some of those um, limitations, I guess. I don't know. I went too long. I Sorry. love that. I'm going to remember that quote, like, for a long time. That was really, that was really dope. Uh, Psychosis, jump in. Yeah, I definitely should have went first, bro. Um, my spirit animal just cursed that. Um, what I was gonna, what I was gonna say, and it was, was it Rose Gold who asked this question yeah. about the structure? Yeah. Okay. Um, Rose Gold, you still there? Yeah, I'm here. What genre? What genre of music do you write? Do you work in to prefer? I do like alt pop mostly. Some some hip hop. What do you think you best at? Well, I mean, alternative is is my lane in pop, uh, pop alternative. But I've been doing um, collabs with hip hop artists that I think that's like that. I think mixing genres, like has been said, is is one way to find that unique voice. And so I found that super inspiring, and I've I've definitely had some success in it. But you know, yeah, my true authentic artist self is is an alternative pop artist for sure. And why 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 would you pick that? Like, why, how did that happen? How did you become into alternative pop? Uh, I think that just comes from what you listen to, right? I mean, in in the time, you know, you, you what you're inspired by, what you have instruments around you to grab. I mean, I grew up in a time of you know the '90s and it was like, you know, Nirvana and Britney Spears meets techno. It's just a whole a whole mesh of things. But, um, you know, I'm a songwriter, so that's where pop comes from, right? Because I do write lyrics. And I love, you know, this, this idea of broadening, like saying something unique, saying something that's relatable in a unique way. I think that's kind of where the pop comes from, to appeal to masses. So... The reason why I asked that is to prove you didn't even need to access this question. What's what the formula is, is that. 
is who you are over music and tweak and perfect it. And who you are over music again, like refining your story. Who are you? What do you feel? What have you been through? What do you want people to take away? Um, you, we're dealing with, you know, and Herman kind of kind of touched on this. You're doing this unique dance where you are artists and every artist we're sensitive, sensitive about what we make um, and we're connected to it. But also the person paying you is a corporation or somebody who represents a corporation, uh, a movie studio, a TV studio, an ad agency, somebody like that. So you're doing this delicate dance of my art being licensed to a corporation which may or may not you know, care about your music at all, just doesn't fit this scene. They might delete all of the lyrics, you know what I mean? So I say that to say, you know, going back to what her mom was talking about, don't, don't take any one particular piece of advice when it comes to that. The best thing that I would suggest that you do is keep writing shit you care about. <laughs> you know, like, you know, there's there's all these elements in music and you're going to pick up on them. You're going to come across producers, you're going to come across rappers, you're going to come across people that, that help you build your sound. But when it comes to the nitty gritty, people care about soul, which is why early I said, Herman's my spirit animal, because you said something Saturday, Herman, that really stuck out to me. You were talking about um, music and, and writing, uh, can't remember the exact words you used, but just music like from pain, the, the, the records you play, like it, it came from somewhere it means more, it's grounded and more. And music that means something and people can tell it means something, you know, that's that's what that's where you write from. And music supervisor and sync, as I said earlier, this is one of the few places where people do actually care about the music. And so it's different than chasing like a radio single. People care about your delivery, your voice, the mix, and the words all together. So if you just focus on, I'm going to make music that means something to me, that comes from a real place, and then I'm going to get the best people around me to help it sound good sonically for the mix and the production, you're going to make music automatically that's syncable. Very, very cool. I'm I'm really glad. Um, this is a great question, and I'm glad that we went down this path. Thank you, uh, Jen, for asking it. One, it got, it got her mind to say this quote that, I'm going to remember forever. And this discussion about just artistry and sync is really invaluable. Awesome question. I'd, Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to oh. kind of offer like a totally different spin on this. And I like, you know, I, I don't disagree with the authenticity. And I mean, I really respect and like so many people on this panel. But guys, come on. If, if that were the case, like, I could name a thousand artists who are better than me, but I have more syncs than them. And it's not that I'm a better artist or more authentic. It's that there's a form. There is a formula. There is a, a way that a music editor cuts the music. And I'm sorry, I'm getting very passionate about this. But, you know, if, if it were the case that it were just authentic, people would just be getting emails in their in their box all day that said, like, I love your music, I want to use it. And that's not the case. Like, we have to learn these rules. And just just to give you an example, one formula I use, my lyrics cannot be too wordy. If they're too wordy, they distract from the scene. And it's like, I always go back to, like, the Snow Patrol song that I hate so much, <laughs> but I got so many things, where the guy's like, da, da, da. Da, da, da. You know that one? You guys like the Grey's Anatomy shit. Like, there, there is a way that you create space and and build a song for TV and film, and that's just one rule. Like, one rule is don't don't make your lyrics too wordy. Another rule is like, you have to have one emotion. If you have too many emotions, you're trying to distill into a song. It's too confusing. The song won't work. You know, it has to be like loss it has to be anger it has to be like whatever it is that's gonna because you're replacing the emotion of the scene for that actor so you have to be distilling that emotion down and then uh, the other thing i would advise for like literally anybody find the music that sounds like your music that's already being used for sync and playlist the crap out of it and break every song down you know jen's a producer I, i've heard her stuff she doesn't have a problem with being authentic 
you know, she's putting her heart and soul into it. It's just like, well, it's not going to work for Sting because, like, you know, she doesn't have that the build in the beginning or it's sparse or maybe it's maybe the the lyric is too worried. I'm not. I mean, I'm not specifically talking about your music yet. I'm just saying like there are these things that then prevent really great songs. Like they'll never be think songs because they're they don't do these uh, few things. And I'm I can't think of any more off the top of my head. Maybe you guys can, but. Um, I think I'm going to end my rant now. I, I do think there is, I think you could group songs together that are authentic and like yours and get placed and just break down some of the production things. Listen to how the lyrics are delivered. You, you know, listen to how the song builds and where the drops are and, and how many edit points there are for a music editor to, to cut to. And then make the best song that you can make with your authentic self and use some of those techniques. So, One lyric vocalese also gets licensed a lot and they'll drop the rest of your lyrics out and they'll use your na na na's or your oo's. So putting those in is part of the, the sync formula is just having, having an instrumental section, having a vocalese section, just all the sections that you can possibly have that they can do something different with. Oh, totally. Replace the lyrics, See, yeah, with an oo and an ah. And like now you've given them something else to work with. So I I think I don't one I love that you said that summer and I love that that perspective I don't necessarily think that um, conflicts I think that goes like to me that goes back to what Q said in the beginning which is if you know the rules you know you know it tends to work um, then you can do that in your most authentic way, which is how you ended, you know, what you said, Summer, and it goes, I think maybe people are, are trying to avoid just saying, okay, if you want to get a placement, do this, 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 and this, um, and your songs will work necessarily on, you know, in a particular lane. So if you're talking about TV, even some of the rules you said, that might be like TV. We've done listening sessions where we played songs that might be great for TV. And then we've had an ad supervisor in the room and he was like, yeah, that sounds like every generic sync song. I would never put that in the ad. You know, I want something that sounds, you know, special or give me, I want a real artist. I want to know that I'm working with an artist and not like a formulaic writer. And so knowing each individual, knowing the different lanes and what their rules, at least what the client is expecting in that place, I think, that kind of helps and so i yes like i write with it like i said i i, I keep that i keep those sync themes when i'm doing a writing session i have my sync themes on my desktop so if i'm thinking of a song i want to write but i'm also looking at this list of 24 themes and knowing these things usually work well with ads because i want to write something that's going to work with ads it's my my focus and concentration is going to be sync and i have a dozen Spotify playlists that I've curated with songs that have been synced. So I have production references, I have mix references. And so I'm following the formula, but then like Herman says, you know, I'm also allowing myself to, I want to do something special. I don't want to just make another happy to be home song. I want to make, you know, I want to write something that if I play it, you're going to remember it. And you're going to want to hear it again. And it also will work for a home song, but it's not going to be called, you know, feels like home because there's a hundred of those. And so um, I don't necessarily think, I, th I, I don't think it's, um, I don't think the statements are conflicting. I think one is saying, hey, yep, there's a formula to what we're doing. And others saying there's formulas, but we want to encourage you to, to find your artist. You understand the rules and then, you know, find your artistry. So like Q said, you know how to break the rules. Right. Can I say one more thing, Eric, about this? Go I know how to move on. But I, I was just thinking, like, for, for, for me, for example, I say that because when I first started, you know, doing music specifically with Sync, I was doing just that. I was following the rules that I taught. And, you know, I can hear it and other people can hear it like, oh, that sounds like you did that for sync. And I, I mean, it wasn't a bad thing, but it was just like, you know, I don't, I, I didn't want to sound, I don't know, you know, I could, I didn't know how to interpret that. Like maybe it works for sync, but 
you know, if somebody wants to hear real songs, but what I found is, and, I, and, and I'm glad, like, I was in sessions like this in Patrol County because I found that even more successful, like, way people that who are in sync, way more successful said, knowing those rules and then trying to bring it back into what you do, I feel like it made me a more creative person because now that I have these tools and, and everything at my disposal, I know what they're looking for. Now I got to figure out, now I had, then I had to figure out how can I put my spin on this and it just opened me up to be more creative. Now I'm trying to say this without saying this, and instead of it being like a setback, I found it opening up me, opening up my mind and and and, and what I was doing to be an even more creative person because I knew these rules, and now I could try to. I had to kind of mesh it all back together, you know, come back to square one, like you said, and um, you know where it works for me and it works for, or not necessarily work for me, but where it's, it sounds like something that is authentic, whether it's authentic to me or authentic to whoever, it sounds like something that, that is authentic and also, you know, it works for scene. Okay. Oh, let me let kick in because it says he, he hasn't been on the stage. And then I got, we got four more people with questions. So I want to move to them and I still want to, we got, a, we got only 20 more minutes left in this room. What up, kick? Hey man, how you doing? I, uh, I'll make it quick, but you, you touched on a very interesting point that's been coming up with me and clients. And it's effort in the content that we as, you know, songwriters and composers make, you know, a lot of the supervisors I've been working with have been mentioning this more and more, but they're like, I could hear the effort you put into the music you're creating and composing. And, you know, it's kind of like uh, them saying like, you know, I hear this type of track all the time. Like, you know, I'm hearing a lot of the, what is it, the grungy guitar kind of, you know, just in car commercials and stuff, like supervisors I work with get bored. They're getting tired of that. But sometimes they'll kind of let it slide. They're like, man, you actually put a lot of effort in Compose. I can hear the transitions. Those are very clean. That's not something you can just do on a dime. There's certain ways you extend the music and cut. Uh, so I just wanted to mention that because it was crazy that you mentioned that out loud and then literally this past few months that's what i've been dealing with here from supervisors so very cool perspective i, pre I like i said I, I i love the discussion i'm I'm glad jen even asked the question and i'm glad some of you came with the the talk because we this is something we as artists and creators and sync professionals or you know who are trying to be all three talk about so uh we we may come back to this in another discussion because um because it's it's worth it, but let's let's move on. Um, I got uh, the most known unknown Marco on stage. Appreciate your patience. You got a question? Are you there? Most unknown Marco P. You there? Going what? Uh, you you got to hit your mute. Oh, you might, you might be new to Clubhouse. Hit your hit your um. Microphone button. Right now you're muted, so we can't hear you. There you go. Oh yeah, my bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up, man? I I was doing something on the other tab right there. No good. How are you doing? I'm blessed, man. I'm just uh just tuning in and seeing uh you know I'm trying to soak up some game. No doubt, no doubt. Did you have a a particular question about Saint? You just tuning in. Um, I am tuning in, but at the same time, uh, I am very interested in trying to uh get into syncing. Because um, I've, I've been producing for many years, probably, uh, I mean, it's, it's gone on to decades now. Um, and uh, basically, um, I produce music for artists and, and albums and things like that. But um, I was trying to break into the, uh, you know, uh, movie uh, soundtrack type of uh, industry also. Cool. Well, you, this is the this is definitely the room you want to be in, and um, um, I don't know if you were here from the beginning, but we're here every Wednesday, and we take you know questions, we bring uh, the community together just to kind of share info about you know kind of what sync is, how it works. Uh, all the people that you see on the stage who are moderated all work in uh, sync, whether as a producer, as a writer, as a composer, or as an agent or supervisor. Um, and then everyone in this room is all learning and growing and operating. You know, many people here have placements. Um, so you're welcome to, to you know, stick in with us and, and we, we continue to we'll share, we grow. 
Um, I'm going to, at the end, I'm going to post a link that everyone can join on the mailing list. And that way you'll know when we do like listening sessions, you'll know when we, um, of music. So, um, yeah, glad you're here. Yeah, for sure. That's dope. Yeah. Um, I just saw that you had a control camp link at the top. Um, yeah, I, I just joined that and all, um, trying to get in tune with what's going on here. And yeah, I did just, uh, just joined clubhouses a couple of days ago. Yeah, I see you. Uh, the, so I'm just a, getting, I got that getting my feet wet you. into this. Congratulations for joining. Welcome. We're, we're glad to have you. And uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll 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 uh, we'll we'll get you straight. We're 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 good. We're a good community. I think you'll you'll find a lot of information shared here. We share freely. Oh, yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm gonna start following you guys just now, guys and gals. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thanks so much, man. For sure. All right, Laurie, how's it going? Hey, Eric and John and Harriman. So many people uh, from our Kathy group are in this group. Um, you know, this is the first time I've actually talked since I joined in June. I've never so. come up right. on stage, so <laughs> <laughs> I've been sneaking in the back and out back the door. Anyway, um, I, you know, this comment I was going to make goes back to when you guys were talking about licensing versus the libraries. And I was thinking, uh, this is just something that's come up with me that I feel like I really need to do. This is on the business side, sort of organization, like what Kristen was saying. Um, once you do have your stuff in library, uh, well, in, especially in agencies, I think it's really important to keep another type of spreadsheet of like when your deals end because every single one of those contracts has like 30 or 60 days out that you have to get in touch with them. So that's something I've just been thinking about because I've got some stuff in exclusive places, some that are non-exclusive, some are five years, some are one year, some are three. And I think that, you know, we always talk about how do you get in? How do you contact? Who do you contact? But once you are in, I think it's good to really keep track of your business that way. Like you need to know when that stuff is coming up, if you want to continue working with him, if you want to free that song, like, you know, like be a free agent kind of thing for the song. Um, so that's all. I just wanted to add that just something to think about for those who are starting to get their stuff signed to deals to also don't forget about them once they're there, you know. That is gold, Laurie. That's such, I mean, I think um, John Kleinbell and I have talked a couple of times about collaborating on just a project management room, mm -hmm. which, he's, he, which he's so good at. Um, and just, like the tools that we use to, I mean, there's so much, um, as you have music, keeping track of things like metadata, who you've pitched tough to, if you're like me and you, you reach out to a lot of people, keeping track of those things, but even at the song level, knowing something as simple as, hey, I've got some songs that, maybe I have some songs and I haven't pitched them yet, like knowing what songs, it, I'm, you know, I might have songs that I made three or four years ago that aren't, haven't landed anywhere. So knowing my catalog and just knowing, yeah what's available to pitch, what's what's used, what's not used, like having that level of organization is um, really valuable. So great tip, great, yeah, great thanks. tip. And I love what all you guys were saying. Um, I love that Summer came in with, I was thinking kind of the same thing, like, yeah, everyone says they want authentic. And I, I came into, you know, the class having a very long career as a, you know, an artist, a recording artist, a musician, and I was totally coming from an authentic way. But, you know, when I went over my entire catalog, there was really no positive, <laughs> there was hardly any positive songs. So, so making like that little shift in, in theme and, um, you know, it depends if you're going for TV film versus commercials, but if you're, if you really want to make the big money in commercials, you can't be writing all these dire sad songs. You got to shift it and, and keep it more universal. So I, I think that you could, if you really want to stick to being a, a truly authentic artist, you, for me, like I know that I need to be geared more toward TV and film because it, I, I start to hear, I hear these, a lot of this stuff is sloganeering, you know, a lot of the, uh, I, I don't want to, you know, I'm not putting it down because I've done a couple of songs with some people for fun like that, but um, you know, where the, there's not a lot of lyrics, but it's one of these themes that gets used a lot and and you can hear that it's made for sync immediately but if it's made really well and it's fun especially in the hip-hop world for certain tv shows it's like it's fun and it works and and they are hitting all the you know checking all the boxes but um i was i was gonna say just more separation between this conversation really needs to be focused on it like are we talking about commercials or tv film because tv and film man you hear quirky shit all the time and 
uh, just a point, Eric, you know how like I didn't send a lot of my back catalog out. You're talking about four or five years. I've had four songs signed that are 15 years and over older that were recorded really well, serious productions. And I held on to them for so long because I got so wrapped up in this. It's got to be current. It's got to be current. Got to have your instrumentals. And another tip, I found Audio Shake. They took two songs of mine on a Sunday, somehow stripped my vocal out of it and gave me an instrumental. And both those songs got signed to two different libraries within a week. So it was really worth it. If anyone should look that up, Audio Shake, if you've got like old songs um, that don't have, you know, you don't have access to the, the files or in my case, the tape, um, you could try to do that because you definitely, some people won't even look at it if you don't have an instrumental. So anyway, that's freed me up now that I've got some of my back catalog, you know, I can focus on the more current stuff, but um, yeah, anyway, hope that That's helps. awesome, Lori. And it's awesome about the, um, I mean, I was told, you know, that for some people that use the old stuff, especially when they want um, authentic, not like retro, Vintage. like you made it today, but when they want something that was actually made in the 70s or 80s or 90s or whatever, that they also are aware that you might not have the stems and so they'll be willing to work with you. But to know that, you know, like you said, these services now, you can strip the vocals, that just opens you up to so many more pitching opportunities. Because yeah. I heard really, that really too. Cool. You know, like our friend Don, like he was like, Laurie, just send the stuff out. They know it's vintage. But um, but like tomorrow, I, you know, I'm only, I'm not presenting this as a, a brag thing, but this is just, if it helps in thinking like, what do you send out? I, you know, tomorrow, Bob will just put out that thing for two, only two songs. So I was like, All right, what do I have that's not signed that I think she might be able to do something with? And I took one pretty new song that was totally like, you know, written in three hours and recorded in the same amount of time. And it was, you know, I guess kind of female empowerment thing, but I knew she could do something with it. And then I said, but that's not who I really am. So I, I sent a song. I thought she would never take this. I, it's just one of my favorite productions, songs. It's a very deep tune, you know, and shockingly, she took that too. So the two songs couldn't be any different. <laughs> They're like, but she, she took them both, you know, because and the other songs are really good song. So sometimes you just have to have faith, like send what you really believe in. And, and, you know, sometimes send what you know they need. That's awesome, Laura. Uh, Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Really good tip. Thanks, man. <laughs> Well, thank I, you for, I for doing all this, man. I, I love you, and you know I'm always listening. Oh, I appreciate that. Same here. I, I think that's well, like a really up. good, good, good spot to really mention and really, uh, you know, like there's no no results are typical in this space. There's no really one path or one genre or one way. You know, one of the first uh, um, taxi conferences that I, I went to and stuff, and and this guy talked. Bob, uh, I can't really say his last name, Bob Meet, Me Too, Meets, or something, is one of the, like, the, the top um, medics. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Guy. I remember that. Uh, you know, and he makes, you know, music, like, from the 30s or something. <laughs> you know, it's just all chill, uh, uh, acoustic jazz stuff, but he found the avenue, you know. Obviously, you're going to hear about... Um, you know, the, 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 it's a numbers game, right? And there's a lot more demand for the positive, modern, contemporary stuff. Because kind of like what Laurie was saying, you know, stuff in TV and film uh, uh, handles a little bit more of a range of emotion, you know? So you can have love songs in a TV show. You can have deep, dark songs on a TV show. Uh, and that doesn't necessarily work for ads. However, the songs for ads and promos and all that do tend to work also at shows every time you want to convey, you know, excitement, energy, um, et cetera, uh, uh, confidence, all those kind of emotions, you know. But, you know, there's a lot of people in the space. I feel like and you get to see them going through all the courses and all that. There's people that naturally were already making authentically the music that was on demand. And all they needed to do is like, or, or all they need to do when that happens is just find the people. There's other people that connect with other kinds of music, and it's either a matter of finding the avenue that's going to work for that music, or 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 like uh, you know, like in the Matrix, you know, you're not bending the spoon, you're bending yourself, type of thing, or you yourself try to make the music that you hear, which is another another path, and depends on where you're 
um, where you get your your satisfaction from the creative process. You know what I mean? And and that's a very personalized thing. Is everybody's relationship with music? You know, is very personal. Yeah, and Aaron, I love the stuff that you're doing too. Oh, sorry, Eric. I just, well, I, I'm just a huge fan of Harriman's music because whenever I check into what he's doing, whether when he produces other people, he brings out the absolute best in them, and when he does his own, he, Herman, you just bring it all. You bring the current sounds. You bring the fucking rock, excuse me, and you bring the emotion. And I, I think there's not a lot of artists that kind of encapsulate all of these things that you need to do to be successful in sync that you, uh, yeah, you got it down. You got it dialed in, man. He does. He does. Totally agree. All right. Let me Thank you so much. Uh, I'm, I'm psychosis spirit animal. Sorry. I just have to throw that out. You are, bro. Last, last, last two people. I don't want to um, cut them off. Uh, we only got like a few minutes. So we're going to end going a little over. Um, TJ, you're on stage. What's going on? Hey, how's it going, man? Um, thank you all for uh, this room. It's really cool. It's my first time being in here, and I found you on TikTok, so um, shout out to you. Um, I'm a producer and an artist, um, and my question is about sample usage in sync. Um, sometimes I find, like, royalty-free samples on Splice or different um, websites, and have you all ever ran into an issue with either royalty-free samples or, like, samples of an actual song? I, did, I got to pipe in here because I, TJ, when I spent TJ. two hours hold in on, a friggin... Hold on, one, with... one, 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 Lori, one second. Because only I'm, a, I'm just only jumping in because it's four minutes left and TJ... Oh, no, I just want to like say a... that there was a whole thing on that yesterday. There was like a two-hour webinar. Oh, man. Oh, that's what, that's what. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, um, and um, unfortunately, I... Um, oh, my God. You asked like the bombshell question right at the end. And so I only wanted to jump on because um, I don't... I don't want to let this e go. I don't want to let this devolve into what it could because we probably will be here another 20 minutes talking about the this talk that happened yesterday um, between the California Copyright um, Association. I don't think I have the right acronym. Copyright, um, the Copyright. CCC. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and um, they were and they met. It was a representative from Splice and a representative from Beat Stars, and so. Um, what's the easiest way to say this? Number one, okay, so at the very least, sampling, like like unauthorized sampling, you know, digging in the crates, um, that totally cannot work um, with sync. Um, anything that, anything where you're like pulling things off vinyl or finding, you know, records, and you have to be able to account for the rights of everything that you're using in your music. Um, on top of that, um, royalty-free loops, especially, you know, whether it's Splice, probably Arcade, um, you know, maybe Logic, other things. There's a whole debate just about Splice. And I'm going to summarize it now because, like I said, I don't, I don't want to go to, to go to account. We may have to do a whole other talk. Maybe we'll bring this up next week on, um, on this. But there was a whole debate. There's a number of supervisors and other people in the industry who are very, very scared of um, royalty-free loops, you know, even, um, include specifically sp Splice. And so it's something where um, we, as part of this meeting yesterday was to talk about it. There really wasn't a lot of legal representation, so it was more people talking about their kind of opinions. Um, and so it's something that we do have to talk about. If you're a producer, I'm a producer, I'm a composer, uh, a number of us on here use royalty-free things. And there's a number of people in sync who do use the, um, royalty-free sites, Arcade, Splice, Logic, Apple, a lot of these loops, but it's definitely an issue um, in the industry that needs to be address unfortunately i gotta stay at that high level because like i said we'll 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 talk about it and we'll, we'll be here for another hour and we uh we don't have that but TJ, i got a very you, uh, short i got a very short way of, of answering his question regarding regarding uh uh stuff from splice and all that go for coming it. That, that that came from the last library that i did a an album for 
and it's very simple. It's if it, it you know you grab a loop or whatever. If it has melodic content, if it's a melody, you have to change it. You have to break it up and change it. If it's chords or or, or any, it, you have to change it. Basically, whatever it is is changing. If it's a very peculiar sound like an impact or something, tell me like if you just add reverb to it or anything. As long as it's not exactly the same sound. Then, 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 then it's usually cool. But basically, you you have to change it. You have to change the stuff. You can't slap anything that comes from Splice like that, just like that. You have to change it one way. I mean, if it's a shaker and if it's a tambourine, I don't think anybody's gonna come after anybody for a tambourine. But if it has a rhythmic pattern, you know, it, and even that, I mean, what's a rhythmic pattern? Eight note pattern. I mean, if it's just something very, very peculiar to the sample that you can hear it being replicated there, then, then it's wrong. If not, I mean, just change it, splice it, put a reverb yeah. on it, you're good. Uh, let me, and I can say, because someone's going to jump in, and I don't, I, I, this one, we're going to, I might have to cut this one off. I will, we will talk about, um, we'll pick this up next week. I will put it on the agenda, come back next week. We'll talk about this, only because I've been saying what her mind has been saying, but there were even people last night who were contradicting that and saying that they would have a problem with, with that in general and so it's definitely something that we have to um talk about um more so um sorry for the vagueness tj no worries i think and i'd love to hear that conversation next week cool, it was cool, hard cool. to understand what was going on all right uh brandon what's going on hey man how you doing uh yeah, def- this is like literally my first time talking in Clubhouse, but my second time being in this room and what you're doing here is, is amazing. Oh, um, welcome. Appreciate you. Thank you. I, I do not have any questions, but I did want to add or kind of chime in on, a- as a producer who's gotten a few placements, you know, with just various companies, um, widen your net. Uh, if you're a producer that has a lot of beats, you know what I'm saying, definitely get to some, you know, music libraries. That's how I got started. Um, and it's been very fruitful. And lucky for me, I actually got with a library that was small in the beginning. And at one point, I controlled about 80% of the hip hop and soul music that was in their catalog. And that allowed me to actually <clears throat> get a lot of placements very, very early on, stuff that's still fruitful to this day. <clears throat> and even some of the older beats that I had from 2012, 2013, you know, have been landing on, you know, random shows just, you know, throughout Viacom and like their whole system for the last seven years. Um, And as of recently, the songs that I've been working on with other artists, some independent artists that are in my circle, I've been getting those to some sync agents who have been able to put my music in the front of people and, you know, in front of music supervisors that I probably would have never been able to get to on my own you know, without that relationship, of course. So um, I just encourage you to widen your net. You know what I'm saying? Like, shoot at everybody. <laughs> shoot your shot. Just like everybody shooting their shot in the DMs, you know, start reaching out to some of these people and be, you know, uh, be intentional about the relationships that you're trying to build. You know what I'm saying? And make sure you're pitching the right music, of course. So that's about it. Yeah, th- appreciate that, Brendan. Really, really cool. And it's crazy you know we've been talking for a couple of hours and we really really didn't hop on how powerful collaboration has been for all of us you know just in terms of expanding our circle getting into kind of agents or libraries or supervisors that we wouldn't have had access to except for just the opportunity to collaborate so for everybody in the room being able to you know i tell producers now like if you if you're if you're a producer trying to get instrumental the same way that people are in DMs trying to pitch their stuff to, you know, whatever, whoever the hot artist is, figure, go to some of these sync agents' websites and look at who the artists that they represent and give beats to those artists. It's one of the fastest ways to get, like, some really big placements um, these days. Very, very cool. All right. So we are right at um, 10.04, and this has been uh, – this two hours has flown by we, um, so we're gonna we're gonna transition here i really appreciate everybody who's on the stage and all the control camp um all the control camp folks you guys are like just clutch you like the answers you all gave um were right on point and i just appreciate that people who've been in this community anyone gives me gives me a good feeling that people can step on the stage and you know mentors what you know 
we can have mentoring, we can have other rooms, we can do other, we have, we have people here who have knowledge and who are able to share it. And I'm just saying that all of you who've been up here uh, were willing to share. And so kudos to you, kudos to everybody who answered the question today uh, and who just um, shared your information. Uh, you made it easy for me, Psychosis, Amar, and Gildy, and Nicole, and Kick to kind of kick back. Uh, and uh, you guys took the microphone and we appreciate appreciate all of you for that. Uh, we are about to transition to the after party. If you haven't been here before, this is a room you have to be following Control Camp to um, to see this room come up. If you're following Control Camp, if you're a member, uh, if you're following us on Clubhouse, uh, you'll see the room come up in your um, hallway. Uh, and this discussion does not continue into there. We this it's a non-sync room. It's kind of like after the TED Talk, kind of hanging out in the hotel lobby. But this is kind of like, you know, just like a real conference, this is where the real relationships are made. Anyone can come up on the stage in that room. Anyone can chat. We chat about everything other than music. We chat about, you know, friends, family. We just kind of make real connections. It's actually really cool. We have real, real cool combo there. So uh, as soon as you log out, come up with this room, it'll show up in the hallway. And then we'll be in there usually no more than an hour. We just kind of kick it in a... Um, uh, and chill. So you're welcome to come join us over in the after party. And then this Saturday, we'll be back for a listening session. So you can, if you go to the um, controlcamp.com, you can submit one song and we will review that song on Saturday, give you some good objective feedback on that. You can consider for some pitch opportunities. And then Sunday, uh, Gildy and uh, Matt Head and some other uh, TV composers will be uh, with us just kind of talking about the film scoring and TV um, scoring process. Shout out to Gildy, who's just wrapping up his first major show that he is scoring for HBO Max. He's been with Control Camp since the very beginning, and we're just super, super, super proud of all the awesome stuff he's doing. Gildy's a beast. Man, a beast. thank you. Congrats, brother. Thank Congrats. Y'all making my head way too big. We're proud of you, bro. For real, for real. All love. Bro. Um, is there? Uh, yeah, we'll tell you more about it as it as it comes up. So anyway, uh, we appreciate all of you and those who can hang. We'll see you in the after party, and everyone else, we'll see you next time. Thanks so much. <laughs>